Good evening, Bahamas. Coming up tonight. Deputy Prime Minister Peter Turnquist reveals the government's deficit has ballooned by more than $100 million. Pine Ridge MP Frederick McElpine offers the idea of an agenda from his critics. Our news is brought to you by Alive, the nation's newest and best LTE network. Good to be alive. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Kyle Joaquin. Top in news tonight, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance Peter Turnquist dropping a bombshell revelation about the country's 2016-2017 projected deficit. Turnquist told parliamentarians that the, figure, the projected figure now stands at $695 million. While revealing the startling figures, Turnquist also revealed the Minister's administration is still unable to trace much of the money borrowed by the former government after Hurricane Matthew. Jasmine Brown reports. Turnquest hit out at the former administration, insisting their financial mismanagement ran the country into the ground. They should be ashamed of themselves, Mr. Speaker. Ashamed to ever approach the, 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 the expenditures, the, the finances of this country. They ran us into a proverbial financial ditch. As the Minnesota administration continues to uncover shocking information about the country's finances, Turnquest revealed today that they have only been able to trace $108 million of the $150 million borrowed under the Christie administration after Hurricane Matthew last October. And while I'm not saying the balance is unaccounted for, what I'm saying is that we just cannot find it. Look Last year, the Christie administration estimated that Hurricane Matthew cost up to $600 million worth of damage. North and Central Andros, the Berry Islands, New Providence, and Grand Bahama were the hardest hit. Turnquest says the financial mismanagement became even more evident in recent months as the bills continue to add up, sending the projected deficit for the 2016-2017 fiscal year soaring. Yes. Bill's still coming. And I'm not talking $2, Mr. Speaker. I wouldn't mind if it was $2. I'm talking big bills. According to Turnquest, the current projected budget deficit for the 2016-2017 fiscal year is $695 million. Back in May, during the budget debate, and only weeks after the f and won the general election, Turnquest told Parliament the GFS deficit was projected to be $500 million. As of yesterday, Mr. Speaker, it's not 500 million as I projected. And I, and I am afraid to say this number. As of yesterday, the budgeted or the projected deficit for 2016 17 is $695 million. What? To further prove his point, Turnquest said in the month of June, the government was presented with 26 bills totaling more than $381 million. Some of the heavy hitters on that list of bills included a $100 million loan from First Caribbean International Bank, $60 million in insurance premiums, $53 million in NHI salaries, $29 million for water and sewage, and $20 million for the Ministry of Tourism expenses. I take no comfort in it and continue to work diligently to implement our full fiscal reform package. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. Well, Turnquest also defended the government's decision to re-enroll in the Caribbean Catastrophe Risk Insurance Facility, insisting it would have been irresponsible not to. By their logic, Mr. Speaker, no one should ever buy home insurance. No one should buy home insurance. Because the, insurance, the insured property may never experience damage exceeding the deductible. For example, if the pipes burst and damage your carpet and the cost to repair was not significant enough to meet the deductible, they seem to be advocating for homeowners to cancel the entire coverage. So that if a hurricane comes, the homeowner assumes all the risk of repairs 
to the entire house. How reckless and irresponsible. Go in the smoker's room. Last month, Seacrift announced that Hurricane Irma triggered payments of approximately $29.6 billion, with the Bahamas initially receiving only $234,000. The Minnis administration paid a $2.6 million premium. The insurance facility explained that the calculations for the Bahamas were not made based on the impact of Irma, but on the aggregate deductible cover. The low payout sparked criticism from the opposition. Those, those criticisms continued in the House of Assembly today as Turnquest hit out at Exuma and Ragged Island MP Chester Cooper for criticizing the, the government on the matter. And that sparked this quick response from Cooper. I believe the question from Angliston, the question from Cat Island, asked for the details to be laid on the table, asked whether the government followed the advice with respect uh, to the insurance from the professionals, and Cat Island specifically asked whether an examination was made as to what the triggers of the insurance policy was before the premium was paid by the Ministry of Finance. Opposition leader Philip Brave Davis today branded the government as hypocritical for introducing the Interception of Communication Bill, or SPY Bill. Last week, Minister for State for Legal Affairs, Ellsworth Johnson, tabled the bill in the House of Assembly. It was so ironic that, that the very person that, 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 that led to call for March against the bill because he was concerned about, about this power being vested in politicians, presents and lays a bill that still contains the same provisions. Davis said the PLP addressed the concerns of the Privy Council, but the bill the FNM table does not, and he believes this the Bahamian people will reject it. The Cat Island Rumkey and San Salvador MP also speaking out about a recent murder on Cat Island. 74-year-old Janice Kessinger was found dead in bushes on Sunday. Davis called it an atrocity for Cat Island. This incident has shaken Cat Island to its core. Ms. Kessinger was well known and well loved, particularly among the young children to whom she extended so many acts of benevolence. Pine Ridge MP Frederick McElpine says the Minnesota administration is moving too slowly in delivering on its many campaign promises to the struggling island of Grand Bahama. This as he asserted that he never said the Bahamas should not help Dominica. He added that those who criticize his comments may have an agenda. Here's April Sands. Pine Ridge MP Frederick Mackle Pine accusing this administration of moving too slow as it relates to the works in Grand Bahama. He's even questioning the agendas of persons who have made him out to be the villain. My, my concern is that we need to somehow find a way to move a little bit more expeditiously to dealing with the people of Grand Bahama. Dealing with the people in the Grand Bahama in the sense of economic um, empowerment, um, trying to meet the needs, the social needs that are on the ground, um, and trying to get people to have a sense of dignity uh, in Grand Bahama again. We love our island, we love our country, and uh, we'd like to see the things that were spoken of from the speech from the throne, what was placed in our manifesto, we'd like to see them come to pass. We'd like to see things uh, that we committed to doing getting done. The Pine Ridge MP says while he understands the country's dire financial situation, the Free National Movement government is in charge and the people must feel like the FNM is in charge. He noted that the island of Grand Bahama is still trying to catch itself from hurricanes Francis and Jean. How bad? Bad enough for me to say that people's houses are, and roofs are still leaking um, since uh, the last hurricane, Matthew, but even prior to that. Uh, we've not caught ourselves from Wilma, um, Jean, and, 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 and Francis. We've not caught ourselves from these hurricanes. Speaking of storm relief, the FNM MP hit back at those persons who criticized his comments over government's decision to accept students and other Dominicans with families in the Bahamas as the small Caribbean country prepares to rebuild. McElpine says while he strongly objected to this move, he never said the Bahamas should not assist Dominica. He suggested that those who chose to twist his words have an agenda. Never once did I say not to assist the people. Never once. So sometimes I'm beginning to wonder if this argument is coming from persons not because of my message, but who the messenger is. What do you mean Well, I'm saying because if, if I'm saying we can help the people of Dominica, and then there are persons in the press trying to to push to the country as if I never said to help them, then I begin to think there's another agenda at play. Like what? I don't know. 
You tell me. The fact of the matter is I'm saying that we ought to help them. We should give them finances. We should send aid. We should send people to help build their country. But it's like that's not being heard. Though some people have suggested that the Pine Ridge MP has spoken out because he did not receive a cabinet post, Michael Pine says that's not the case. So was I disappointed? Yes. But today, I see it as a blessing in disguise. Our ministers are under a lot of pressure. People are hurting and they expect them to have the answers. So I'm being on the outside. Listen, I'm quite comfortable fighting for Pine Ridge and the people of Grand Bahama and Bahamian people at large. I have no problems with that. Now that's the reality and that's the truth. Am I uh, anti uh, my prime minister or the FNM? No. Reporting for our news, I'm April Sands. Hear more from the MP in tonight's edition of On the Record immediately following news. Well, former BEC board member Fred Ramsey was back in the Supreme Court today. Ramsey appeared before Justice Bernard Turner in connection with the court's order that BEC be repaid the entire $221,000 he received for a deal with French company Alstom. You may recall back in July of 2016, Justice Turner imposed a $14,000 fine on Ramsey as opposed to a prison sentence in relation to the BEC bribe matter. Ramsey had two months to pay the fine or face six months in prison. Ramsey's lawyer, Wayne Monroe, has presented the offer that his real, real property is valued more than the amount he's been ordered to pay. And so today, the Attorney General had an opportunity, has had an opportunity to consider our offer, has accepted that the sum ordered can be paid by the conveyance of the property. What is left to be done now is the government will wish to have its own appraisal to be satisfied as to the value and then we have to go through the formalities of checking the title to make sure the government is getting land that has good title. Ramsey is due back in court on December 15th. His attorney said he hopes by that time the conveyance of Ramsey's real property is complete so the matter can be done. Still to come on our news, a concerning number of breast cancer cases on the island of Eleuthera, plus how Cable Cares is helping to mold young minds. Stay with us.